So it's a little bit hard to tell right now, but it appears that this is maple. Now with the size of this, I don't think I can do anything like furniture with this. I could do something like a floating shelf, but we already made some of those a couple months back, so I'm thinking I'm gonna skip that idea. I wanna embody this whole kind of curve that's going on with this, and the one thing that I think will really highlight that will be a serving tray. So let's get started. I really like the way that this shape flows, and I really wanna keep that. However, it's not perfectly flat. It'll actually rock on a flat surface. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is bring out the router and flatten this all down. To start flattening the slab, I grabbed some of this extra sticky painter's tape and made rings to basically imitate double-sided tape. Now, I've seen a lot of people use hot glue, but I think this method works really well. And the key is to have the rings in a few different orientations and that'll keep everything from moving pretty well. With all the tape rings on, I flipped the slab over and stuck it to our mobile workbench. And we've got free plans and full build videos for both the workbench and the drawers underneath, so check that out in the description below. To make sure that this thing doesn't rock, I grabbed some scrap shims. This definitely doesn't need to be anything fancy, just throw something underneath the slab to make sure that it's rock solid. Keep the rocking and rolling in your headphones, not on your slab. Maybe we'll make that a t-shirt or something, I don't know. Now, we need to cut some rails for the router sled to ride on. So I measured the height of the slab and added about a 1 8 of an inch. So for me, it'll be just a touch over 1 and 3 quarter inches. So that's the measurement that we're going to lock the table saw into. Now here's my first mistake. As you can see, I pressed record on the camera because I was ready to cut the rails. You can probably see what's wrong here. My slab is directly in the way. Luckily, we built this table saw cart on mobile casters a few months back, and I could slide the table saw all the way back and clear the slab. I then ripped down the two rails to their finished size for the router sled. Now I'm using plywood for the rails here because I have a small scrap piece that is perfect, but you can always use something like 2x4s. The only requirement is that whatever stock you use, it needs to be perfectly flat so that the router can track perfectly over the sled. If these rails aren't flat, your router sled won't work and your slab will still be cupped or twisted. Oh yeah, did I mention that this thing has some drawers too? With the rails cut, I rolled the table saw back in place and then clamped the rails down to the workbench. And we built this router sled in our herringbone pallet wood coffee table video, which I'll link down in the description below, and I set it on top of the rails. Now you can see how the sled will evenly ride over the slab. I threw a one inch straight bit on my router and started making passes across the surface. You can start to see how the sled works. You basically remove a little bit at a time until you have an even cut all the way across. Then your surface is flat. While I flatten this first side, I want to invite you to check us out over on Instagram at Spensley Design Co. Now, if you're someone who likes to see behind the scenes content and know about each and every project before it hits here on YouTube, consider following us. Instagram is our social media of choice and you can stop by to ask questions and interact with us. Plus, we love seeing when our viewers make projects inspired by us. So check it out and as always, no pressure. Real talk though. My guilty pleasure is sucking up large amounts of sawdust with the vacuum. I really hope I'm not alone on this one. So now that we've got one flat reference edge, what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over and flatten the other side. That way, the two sides are perfectly parallel with each other. The slab is easily removed from the workbench, and I can remove the shims out of the way. Oh, and it's a requirement to try to make a sweet trick shot anytime you use painter's tape. Luckily though, I have another chance to even up the score a little bit later. I rolled up some more tape to hold the opposite side down to the workbench this time and then ran into another problem. The router bit that I'm using isn't very long and I can no longer reach the slab from the sled. So when this happens, I just remove the rails from the workbench and run them through the table saw to trim a little bit off, and then I can install them back on the workbench. 
While I flatten this side of the slab, I want to ask you to consider subscribing to our channel. We absolutely love making these project videos and our goal right now is to reach that 1000 subscriber mark. If you're interested in our content and would like to stay up to date with all of our projects, hit that notification bell. This really helps our channel grow and we appreciate every small thing you can do to help us. And even if you don't want to subscribe, that's cool too. We can't thank you enough just for checking out this project. So after all that routing, this thing is perfectly flat. There is no side to side rock at all, so now we're ready to move on to the next step. Now if you were looking closely while we were flattening everything, you might have noticed that there's a small crack. Now small cracks and slabs are pretty common, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to fill that with epoxy, that way it stabilizes everything so that crack doesn't become bigger over time. But before we pour that epoxy, we're going to get a lot of our rough sanding done. Alright, now's the time for me to come back from this one shot deficit. I really, really need this one. Alright, now that I'm down two in the series, I figured there was no better punishment than sanding. An 80 grit disc on the random orbit sander was enough to remove any marks left by the router bit and worked great for getting rid of all the dust and debris on the side of the slab too. And truthfully, I don't know if you can leave that stuff on the side if you don't cover it in epoxy. So if anybody knows, leave a comment down below and teach me a thing or two. In a lot of these slabs, you'll find these tiny bug holes. And you could fill them with epoxy, but it's a heck of a lot easier if you just fill them with a little bit of super glue, then spray them down with some activator. That way you can instantly cure the glue. For the large cracks, however, we will need to use epoxy. And to prevent the epoxy from leaking through the slab when we pour it, I put a small strip of sheathing tape down on the underside of the crack. I added a little bit of purple pigment to a mixing cup, and for the epoxy, we're using Total Boat's 2 to 1 ratio resin. This stuff is pretty nice since it comes with pre-measured pumps. Just do one pump of resin and one pump of hardener and you'll have the perfect mixing ratio. No guesswork here. After thoroughly mixing for a few minutes, I poured the epoxy into a syringe and then injected it into the wood. I found that this really helps me control where I'm applying the epoxy and also lets me inject it really deep inside the slab. To get rid of any tiny bubbles that'll definitely form, I ran a blowtorch over the epoxy until it looked crystal clear. You could always use a heat gun too if you don't have a torch. I then filled the rest of the small voids in the slab and let this bad boy sit overnight. And speaking of a heat gun, the next day I grab one because one of our followers on Instagram suggested that we try using it to remove the excess epoxy from the slab. Now on our last project, we used a sander to remove the excess and it literally took forever. This heat gun was a total game changer though. I just heated the epoxy up for about five seconds and then easily removed all the excess. Even if you don't have a heat gun, the $15 is well worth the price for the amount of time that it saves you. And all it takes to remove the stained area around the cracks is a little bit of sanding. I removed the sheathing tape from the underside of the slab and it was actually shocked that the epoxy did not make it all the way through. No problem though, this crack is small enough that a little bit of super glue should be able to take care of it. That is, if I don't accidentally remove the bottle cap and pour it all over the slab. Really hope I'm not the only one that's done this before. A little spray of activator and this crack is filled. So after looking at this a little bit more through sanding and when I was talking to Miranda last night, we think that this is actually gonna be too big of a cutting board. It's really not practical and it's not gonna have anywhere to really be stored in anybody's cabinets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just cut this in half so we can have two different boards. Now cutting a slab that has a weird shape like this is kind of awkward since there aren't many flat edges to reference, but our crosscut sled worked great. You could also use a track saw or a circular saw though. However, that's kind of the beauty of a slab like this. You don't need the cut to be absolutely perfect. Having a strange shape actually accentuates the board instead of ruining a project like a bad cut on a cabinet piece would. Now that I cut the slabs down to their finished shape, I started the sanding process. I thought about doing a router profile on the sharp edges, but I just elected to hand sand them instead. 
And after sanding up to 180 grit, I wiped on some water. This will raise all the fibers in the slab and then after it dries, I'll sand them back down. This will prevent the cutting board from losing its smoothness after it's washed for the first time. And also, it looks kind of cool in time-lapse mode when you can see that water evaporate. And after a second sanding, I'll apply water to pop the grain one more time and then I'm ready for final sanding. Now since these boards will be in contact with food, I'm using butcher block oil. It's a blend of mineral oil, carnauba wax, and beeswax. Plus, this stuff is super, super easy to apply. Just wipe on a heavy coat and work it into the wood. Now your first coat will likely get completely sucked up if the wood is as thirsty as this slab is. And while I apply the finish to the boards, I want to let you know how you can be a part of a Spensely Design Co. for free. If there's a project that you would like to see us make, tell us down in the comment section below. And if we pick your idea, we'll feature your comment in that future video. So come up with something clever and tell your friends to submit some ideas too. After letting that first coat sit for about 20 to 30 minutes, I came back to apply another coat. And pretty much just keep doing this until the board doesn't suck up any more oil. Then, wipe off all the excess, and you're done.